There's been flooding in the Rakantha province. An earthquake hit the Kendra Valley and a tornado struck Tamolna. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Ciroc Lofton. Hello, hello. Nothing funny about any of those. This is a serious episode. My name is Ryan T. <laughs> Husk. Today, we are doing a review of Deep Space Nine Season 6, Episode 21 already, The Reckoning, story by Harry Worksman and Gabrielle G. Stanton. There's a little story behind those two. And teleplay by our buddies, David Weddle and Bradley Thompson, directed by Jesus Salvador Trevino. This was April 29th, 1998. How are you doing today, Sirach? Doing good. You kind of uh, piqued my interest there with the little story behind that one. <laughs> yeah, already. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, oh, do you want to say one more uh, interesting story? Special thanks today to Carolyn Fansler. Thank you very much, Carolyn Fansler. Thank you, Carolyn. It's kind of a short it's story. So... <laughs> oh, is it? No, that was it. Well, let me know. Oh, that was the story. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Uh, yeah, Jesus Salvador Trevino. Yes, I remember him. I'm looking his picture up now. Oh, really? You remember him? I feel like this mm -hmm. is only the second time I've mentioned his name. How many times has he directed? I'm not sure about how many times he directed. Um, I do remember him. Um. It's very had a kind of a a Mexican Woody Allen type of approach to directing. I remember how thoughtful and uh, oh, nice how much energy he put into it. So yeah, that definitely left an impact. Actually, it looks like this is the third and final time he directed Deep Space Nine. He also directed Sons and Daughters and The Begotten before this, uh, but he did direct five episodes of Voyager in the same time. Those five and the three Deep Space Nine were all between 97 and 98. And he directed five episodes of Babylon 5 from 1995 to 1998. The Voyager episodes, by the way, are vis-a-vis, -vis, retrospect, concerning flight, day of honor, and fair trade. So he's done pretty well for himself. And boy, his he was directing all the way up to uh, 2010. Yeah, and in this particular episode, there was a lot of extra, I guess, special effects type of things that were happening with the electricity <clears throat> and the the different moments on the station. So I'm I'm sure that was uh, a challenge for him to kind of incorporate into what he was trying to accomplish visually. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like he needed to do that because this was definitely one of those bottle episodes. It's one of those things that Deep Space Nine does so well, which is even the bottle episode leaves a little nugget of story for future episodes. This one is how it ends with the uh, the paw race and the, and the prophets not finishing their reckoning. And so now it's like, when will they be back? I don't know, but someday, you know, it's one of these things where it's like, you know it leads into a future episode. And that's what's really cool about even their bottle episodes. I also want to point out, everybody, before we get into it, I'm wearing a awesome shirt, an awesome shirt by Ciroc's sister at abyssiniankiosk.com. This one is the Cisco Kid design. She's got lots of really cool designs, a lot of Star Trek designs, a lot of... Uh, Eastern African uh, designs and art. Really cool, not just shirts, uh, all kinds of good stuff. Check that out in the description box below, abyssiniankiosk.com. Everybody loves her stuff. Her uh, uh, <laughs> customer service is second to none. That's what everybody talks about. They're like, oh my God, she's so nice. She does all these different designs. She's so cool. <laughs> so I, clearly you're adopted. Um, but, <laughs> no, yeah, no, but she's great. She we highly the, recommend. Uh, yeah, she got a lot of talents that I don't have. So, um, <laughs> well, shout no, out you to her. Can and draw also, like a champ. I can draw. I can draw. But she's just really efficient about the graphic design and just mm -hmm. her ideas and implementing it. She's uh, she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but also, she's working on some new stuff. So, if you want to check it out and go to the site, 
there'll be some new designs that she's um, launching really? very soon. Yeah. When, uh, so pretty soon, huh? Okay, cool. Yeah, let us know. It, when that yeah, happens. if it's not already up there, it's coming. It's coming within the next few days. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So that's a good thing. I'm gonna take a quick check. Whoa. I do feel like that one looks new. We're going to do a quick share screen so everybody can check it out. If you're listening in, we will describe it. It's cool Star Trek and uh, African stuff. This one looks new to me. No, it's still the Cisco kid, though. No, that's a, that's a new one. Yeah, that's a new design. It's, a, it's the, I guess, the Cisco kid line, but a new design within yeah. it. Wow, that one looks cool. Yeah. It looks a little bit more old school. So everybody at home, it's yeah. like black and yellow. And, black uh, and yellow. It's like uh, the Star Trek insignia within a Star Trek insignia, that which is striped. There's also all kinds of other cool designs yeah. that we know and love. Um, yeah, so I have her working wow. on some more new ones. It's coming down. Whoa, look at this one. That is cool. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. so check that out, abyssiniankiosk.com in the description box below or type it out. If you don't know how to spell Abyssinian kiosk, just do what I did. Type it into Google, like general, be like, Abbas, yeah, and then it pops up. You're like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> exactly. Um, I totally feel that because sometimes <laughs> I find myself just trying to figure it out. You say, yeah. oh, I know Google. It'll yeah. fix it for me. Yep. Um, so. But yeah, but this, this was a great episode. I, it, was, it was interesting to me. Um, I like the way they started out with the whole finding this tablet and starting you know picking my interest like what's going to happen um little indiana jones ish you know with the backstory and the history twenty five thousand years ago thirty thousand yeah. years ago so i did like um just right off the top in the beginning i, I was like oh where is this gonna go um this looks yeah. interesting yeah when i as soon as this episode starts my first thought is eh, th these are the kind of episodes that i remember not being interested in back in the day and I remember thinking, but Sirach is, <laughs> this, is definitely, <laughs> this is definitely his thing. I mean, what's interesting to me is like, you know, history and, and hieroglyphs and, you know, that kind of aspect and how it affects culture and the past and all that, you know. Um, and I certainly am more interested in the Bajoran episodes than I remember being when I watched these back in the day. Uh, so I can yeah. definitely have a, a better appreciation for it. But I know that these episodes are a little bit more up your alley uh, than mine. I remember when I was back in the day, when I first watched these, I'd be like, oh, another Bajoran episode, huh? <laughs> uh, I just want to see Jem Hadar and stuff, you know, but but now I can actually appreciate them and enjoy them. And I'll be honest, I did not remember this episode until the end you know with the lightning battles and all that kind of stuff then i was like oh i do remember this part now you know once once they kind yeah. of got taken over now then i remembered it so i don't know if i would just glaze over before when i watched it or what yeah i i knew i was in this episode i just didn't know to what degree until, oh really yeah i forgot about this i mean i, I didn't forget about it because because of the makeup and uh, the makeup process that I had to go through, right? The worms so, on your, you, you got all yeah, crazy. I had those, uh, those wormy <laughs> veins popping in my face. And so I remember that. And obviously I remember the contact lenses that I had in this episode. I was seeing an ophthalmologist and how to get fitted for these red lenses, which I should have kept because, I mean, they were literally made for me. So it's silly for me not to have kept them, but um but yeah it looks creepy <laughs> you know a word of advice about uh keeping creepy contact lenses you think yeah. boy it might be cool to just kind of wear them out or do whatever right or you know maybe halloween let me tell you back in the day back in in a i think i was like a freshman in college or something like that and i remember getting fitted for contact lenses and they're like, it was something crazy, like for 10 or $20 more, you can get your prescription in these crazy things. Like you could have red eyes or purple eyes or crazy, whatever. And so I yeah. got the, it was kind of like these, you know, cat or lizard eyes that were like, you know, like a, a vertical line 
it was like basically yeah. yellow yellow eyes but with yeah. like you know just the the line in the middle so it looked like these crazy cat eyes or lizard eyes and i was like how fun right and yeah. so i put them on and i'm like yeah totally worth it i'm gonna go have some fun and be the guy with the weirdo eyes who cares right man yeah. you can't live your life you can't live your life. I'm sitting in, in a college class and, and, and like the teacher's trying to teach. And then somebody next to me is like, Oh my God, what's wrong with your eye? Like she's freaking out. <laughs> and then people are like, like, like gasping, you know, cause it's actually like really off putting and scary. And then somebody <laughs> behind me was like, what's going on. I turn around and she like kind of screams. She's like, ah, and I'm like, okay, I can't do this. This is not a real, it's, it's, a, you can't just like, you can't turn it off. Like, like when you want to have yeah. it on, you know, you're like, hey, cool, look at these funny eyes. But what about if you're just trying to buy something at the store or sit in class quietly? It it doesn't work. So anyway, maybe it's better that you didn't keep them. Because <laughs> I never yeah, wore them that. I was like, not worth yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, it was probably also the fact that they were the red evil eyes. And I'm like, I don't want to walk around with the evil eyes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they look pretty cool on you, though, man. Yeah, yeah, it was um, interesting, and uh, you know that's the first thing that I thought of when once I saw it. I was like, "Oh, yeah, that was the contact lenses that we picked up." And I forgot where it was, but I think it was far. And um, and yes, and then those veins in my in my face. So, but I did like a few things. There were moments there that I liked. There were moments, for example, with Odo and Kira where they started talking like. In the, in the opening of this episode, they were kind of having this banter between each other that is reminiscent of a kind of relationship that has kind of already got some wheels under it, right? Yeah, they were going yeah, back yeah. and forth. Yeah, they were going back and forth where, where uh, Odo's like, well, will the Romulans leave uh, Benzar? You know, and, you know, he starts to say that the Romulans don't like to leave once they've occupied a place. They're, they don't give it up. And... Um, <clears throat> Kira kind of goes up, go, you know, gives a little exchange with him and says, stop being so grumpy, Odo-y. you know, or, <laughs> yeah. <Odo-y. laughs> yeah. And, and, then, and then he does a thing where dour and suspicious is, is my nature or something to that uh, effect. So I, I like that little interchange between them. And uh, by the way, Benzar is, I'm assuming that is the home planet of the Benzites. And everybody that's watched The Next Generation knows who the Benzites are. They're these guys. They're very interesting looking. I forgot what this character's name was in Deep Space Nine. I know there's a lot of Star Trek fans that are yelling out his name right now. Uh, Let me see if it says it. Anyway, so, God, I can't remember his name. Anyway, so they're they're cool. They need that breathing apparatus, you know, that uh, because they're planet has you know different air and whatever you know but they're an interesting race i liked them a lot and they kind of look like seals like like a seal face right yeah kiss from a rose yeah or an Um, otter (laughs) not that otter (laughs) yeah they're interesting uh i hope you get it you know we've seen a couple of them there was also where did we see that there was also like a female benzite and I, th- yes, yes, yes. You know what? There was a female Benzite in a previous Deep Space Nine episode and it was a lady and she died, you know, like on the, the Defiant or something. She was like a comms person. And then that lady came back into in a recent Deep Space Nine episode that we reviewed. And I don't remember what it was, but we, we were both impressed by her and was, we're like, wow, who is she? And she was like really pretty. And then come to find out she was this, gross benzite thing with things out of her face <laughs> and some like moda or something like that anyway uh that's enough about benzite. yeah well, everybody knows that the, the benzites uh were established by their first colonizer ben mercedes right that's very true that's very true yeah. and uh the lady's name was hoya ensign hoya Oh, yeah. Nice. Now I got to figure out who she played. Anyway, <laughs> because now it's killing me. Who it's killing you now. Ah, oh, got it. Hillary Shepard. 
And she was the one that played uh, the sultry lady with the four wacky geniuses. Mm -hmm. Remember this lady? The wacky genius. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, in the psych ward. Yeah, the exactly. psych ward episode. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and she also played this character here. Those were the genetically enhanced people, right? Right, exactly. And she also played this character, so that's why we... Anyway. Yeah, that's not, that's not a flattering picture of her. No, don't get me started on, on crazy Star Trek aliens, because I go deep. I, anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Plus, I'll be honest, spring has sprung and... Allergies have kicked my bung today. <laughs> oh, really? I feel like somebody just poured pollen on my eyeballs <laughs> while I was sleeping. <laughs> They're killing me right now. You don't, you don't get allergies, huh? Uh, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. I do. Anyway, so sorry I sidetracked us here. Odo and Kira are now basically showing that they're not feeling each other out let's have a second date let's see what happens. they've just gone full blown into it and they know each other they know each other's mannerisms yeah. and all that you know? yeah and it was a nice little interaction between the two of them um <clears throat> this cisco i i love it when they when they call um captain cisco the cisco yes it's one of my favorite things and um I'm going to have to tell my sister about making a shirt with the Cisco on it. Yeah. That's, that hasn't been done yet from what I think. Um, and I do like that. I like those moments when the aliens are that, you know, surrounding him. If I can make some, Cisco will know. if I can make some <laughs> suggestions after the yeah. Cisco, also the emissary would be a good line. I also yeah. think a line called yep. Joseph would be cool. Joseph mm. Cisco, just Joseph, and it would have like Creole or, or Cajun. I think it's Creole, um, some kind of Creole type design or something reminiscent, you know, like a crawfish or you know, just something kind of yeah. cool and and uh, historical and cultural. There might be really fun. Uh, yeah, maybe like Joseph's Creole Kitchen or something like that. Like it's a restaurant uh, <laughs> kind of advertisement. Right now, you're just cool. going. Tell you what, when you guys open your own store, yeah. you can go ahead and go with all these wild. <laughs> yeah, I do that to my sister. She's like, uh, you know how much work is involved in all that. Yeah, stuff. it's I'm not like, that yeah, easy. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, the Cisco, you know, and I like that. Um, but I didn't. I, I don't know. As soon as I see Kai Wynn's face, my whole demeanor changes. Like I'm like, oh God, here she is again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> i love it so much and i know that when i'm watching these episodes there are two things there are two characters where i immediately think of you as soon as they pop on one is wayun as soon as wayun pops in i'm like oop sirak just leaned forward in his seat you know yeah, as yeah. soon as kai win shows up or is mentioned he uh, he's like oh i'm gonna need a snack to get through this <laughs> yeah <laughs> As soon as I see her, oh God, my child, my child. She's her arrogance is just so uh it's just it's just overwhelming. And um, you know, and her jealousy of Cisco is yeah. another thing that's just like he's just unbearable because it's like he's not even competing with her or you know, trying to compete with her, but she is so in, in competition with him. Mm -hmm. And I, and those one way competition relationships are the most awkward for me. It's like so awkward when somebody's competing against you that you're not competing against them. Um, I think that's the best way. I know exactly what you mean. A one way competition. That, that is a perfect way to describe it. And those people, you want to just be like, Hey, you, you win. What do you want? You, you win. Okay. What do you want me to say? Yeah. yeah. Here. Have yeah, have yeah. It. You're better than me. You're, you're better than me. You're, you're cooler than me. You got a better car than me. Whatever yeah. it is that you yeah. mean about job, job do. Great job. Yeah. Move on. <laughs> it's crazy, and a lot of that happens too within families. You know, uh, mm. sibling competitions. It, it happens even within families. You know, it's like, dude, I'm not even competing against you, but 
somebody is competing against you. So it, it's, it happens a lot. And when I see it with Kai Wynn and Cisco, I'm thinking to myself, he doesn't even want to be the emissary. He's literally, you know, <laughs> he's, he's just literally saying, you take all the power. It's all you. Don't bother me with it. But every once in a while, you know, I might want to flex my emissary power. <laughs> Hey, emissary got to do what the emissary got to do. You, yeah. And you need to back off. And that was one of my things. I actually felt, and it pains me to say this, but I thought that Kai Wynn had a legitimate argument when she said that you removed this artifact yeah. without, without permission from Bajor. That is a legitimate grievance that I believe she for the first time, I had to kind of agree with her perspective on something. Yeah, I, I agree. I thought the same thing. Like when she was going to come up and say stuff, you know, you're thinking, all right, this woman's got the personality of a sour cream sandwich. And she yeah. and then but then she said that and I was like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. They just basically <laughs> stole. They just yeah. stole a valuable <laughs> artifact. And, he, and his reasoning was what basically Oh, I didn't think you'd mind. <laughs> like it wasn't even like, yeah. oh, I got permission from the government. He's like, yeah, oh, that, yeah. I, I just figured that, uh, you know, my grandfather used to say, uh, figures don't lie, but liars figure. And so when somebody goes like, oh, I just, I just figured that, uh, <laughs> you wouldn't mind. <laughs> that's a big deal. That's that's a good one. Figures yeah. don't lie, but liars figure. I like that one. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> But yeah, that was that he took it upon himself to kind of make that decision. And it reminded me of other instances in which that's occurred in the past, specifically with ancient, you know, Egyptian archaeological um, treasures that, that belong to the country. Yeah. Um, and in Ethiopia, they've t- uh, certain artifacts were removed from the country and put on display in museums, and, you know, around the world. And um Ethiopia, as a matter of fact, had to made, made a written request to get some of these things back. Italy was in possession of this uh, kind of a monolithic tower type pillar that it, that it just stole. It hijacked from it hijacked from uh, the country. And wow, um, really? yeah, and this thing is a huge, tall stone pillar, right? That's probably. Sorry. Um, it's a huge it's a huge pillar that's like, um, I would say, 100 feet in the air. Wow. Jesus well, Christ. yeah. So, uh, so and they, what they did was they chopped it up into three pieces and took it into and took it to Italy and erected it there. So they took it, chopped it into three pieces and helicoptered it out of Ethiopia and erected it into some plaza in uh in italy and many years later through writing and making certain kind of government negotiations we were finally able to get this thing back but this is a common occurrence yep. from you know archaeologists and so-called people looking for artifacts they'll just take it <laughs> yeah i remember hearing uh egyptians say like egyptian archaeologists basically about like the pyramids and the ruins that they're like yes you know, these are these ruins are for the world. We want the world to learn this. We want the world to be a part of this. We want all blah, 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 blah. However, this is still in Egypt. These are still Egyptian artifacts. This right. is still should be an, an Egyptian led situation. You know, there was there was just something there where they're like, yes, yes, yes. But. Can we still keep Egyptian stuff Egyptian? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, you know, I know it's, these are coming from the archaeologists, like the actual scientists that, that are doing this and all that. And it made sense. Also, we got to go to our break real quick. Uh, but I do want to point out that the one way uh, competition with Jake Cisco, everybody knows it. Molly. Molly was always out to get him. And we're <laughs> sick of it. Molly. Rumpelstiltskin. Maya. Anyway. All right, let's uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back on the other side on The Seventh Rule.